When I was eight years old, something happened which totally changed my entire life. A great scientist had just died, and the newspapers all published a picture of his desk with an open book. And the caption said, this is the unfinished manuscript of the greatest scientist of our time. The scientist, Albert Einstein, had been working on the so-called God equation. He wanted an equation no more than one inch long that would allow him to, quote, read the mind of God. So I said to myself, wow, this is for me. This is something that I have to do. Kaku went on to build a particle accelerator in his parents' garage in high school and dedicated his life to finding that equation, which has also been referred to as the theory of everything. Wouldn't that be nice, Professor? The one simple, elegant equation to explain everything. Kaku has appeared in TV specials explaining science and written 17 books. His latest book, The God Equation, explains the history behind the search for a theory of everything and the emergence of the string theory, which Kaku believes could be the equation Einstein was searching for. The power of string theory is that it unifies the forces of nature. Theoretical physicists believe there are four fundamental forces, strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, gravity, and electromagnetism. Kaku says if we could explain all of these forces, we could understand how our universe operates. He equates it to the rules of chess. Let's say chess is the rules of the universe. After 2,000 years, we finally figured out how the pawns move, how the bishop and the knights move. One day, we'll have the God equation, and that'll tell us how the whole chessboard moves, and then we'll become grandmasters. We'll be able to apply this to answer some of the deepest unsolved questions in relativity. For example, is time travel possible? Einstein's theory says yes, but is it really true? We don't know. What happened before the Big Bang, before creation itself? What lies on the other side of a black hole? All these questions cannot be solved with the present understanding of physics. But that's where string theory comes in. String theory is a theory of everything. In the 1970s, Kaku and his colleague Keiji Kakawa took the ideas of string theory and put them into one simple equation known as the string field theory. Kaku says string theory is closer to Einstein's ideal of a God equation than the long and complicated, but widely accepted, standard model. Now we have something called the standard model, which clumsily gives us rhyme or reason with regards to all these subatomic particles, but it is ugly as sin. How can nature at the fundamental level, the level of the standard model of particles, be so ugly and clumsy. It's like getting an aardvark, a platypus, and a whale, scotch taping them together and declaring this to be nature's highest evolutionary achievement, the elegance of evolution. Nope, we need a new paradigm. String theory says this new paradigm is music, the music of resonances, you know, when you learn music, you learn that each vibration corresponds to a note, A, B flat, C sharp. How many notes are there on a string? An infinite number, infinite number of octaves. The string theory suggests tiny strings make up everything, and that the infinite number of their vibrations, like musical notes, account for the vast diversity of our universe. Kaku says the string theory is not complete, as it needs to account for newer ideas such as 11 dimensions. But I think that some young enterprising kid out there will finally finish the whole theory from a fresh point of view. So I think the theory is testable, and I think the theory is falsifiable, and I think the theory is correct. You've been working on the string field theory for decades now. You're the founder, one of the co-founders of the string field theory. Do you ever have these shadows of doubt because it is a theory that it could be disproven? It's always possible that you spend a lifetime on a theory and the theory turns out to be wrong. But you see, that is a good feeling because you're one step further toward understanding reality itself by removing the dead ends, removing the false leads. As physicist Friedman Dyson once said, the road to the unified field theory, the road to the final theory, 
is littered with the corpses of failed attempts. Hundreds of failed attempts. The greatest minds of humanity have tried to create this theory and have failed. What keeps me going is the fact that of all these corpses, one theory has defied everyone's, all the critics' expectations. It has survived every challenge, and that's string theory. So we know that mathematical consistency is on the side of string theory. So that's why I think that it has to be correct. Someone like me who isn't versed in physics can pick up the book and try to understand all of this. Was your aim to impress on people who aren't already aware of what this search for the theory of everything is, what the potential, the incredible potential is um, if we do find the answer? Well, there are two kinds of audiences that I want to reach. The first is the young upstart who really wants to find the unified field theory. And I give them a, a message of advice. I tell them that if they ever find the God equation, the theory of everything, then tell me first. <laughs> and we'll split the Nobel Prize money together, <laughs> you and me. When I write a book, I think of myself at the age of eight. I went to the library and I found nothing. Nothing about the unified field theory. Lots of books about atomic bombs, lots of books about Einstein the man, but nothing about hyperspace, antimatter, all the stuff that's contained within the, the God equation. And I said to myself, when I grow up, I'm going to become a theoretical physicist. And in addition to working on the God equation, I will write for children, young adults, the curious, to satisfy their, their curiosity about higher dimensions, about antimatter, about hyperspace, about wormholes, because that's what I do for a living.